welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing well and in good spirits. I found another uh, simulation which will hopefully be applicable to chemistry internal assessments. I hope you find this uh, useful. If you do, don't forget, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, give us a comment. Always appreciated. Thank you very much. So, Chem Reacts, I think this will uh, probably is a bit better than the previous one that I was using, Chem Collective. And uh, it seems like some comments have suggested that Chem Collective, you have to be quite um, select at what you're doing. And with any internal assessment, it is not what you do, it is the way that you do it. I think it's a good mantra to keep in mind as we go through this. So, Chem Reacts is very sophisticated. It, it is for AP system, IB system, and undergraduate chemistry. And there's some fantastic little simulations in there which you can use in your teaching or in your learning of IB chemistry. For students and teachers that pretend to like their physical chemistry, so thermodynamics, their Gibbs free energy, their enthalpy, their entropy, um, they know their Ks from their KCs and their KPs, then this will be a, a fantastic little jewel that you can explore. And you'll probably think of more um, potential research questions than Mr. M for Chem here. The software does have over 1,200 different species you can select as reactants or products. You can't put in that you're going to react zinc and oxygen and make some gold. I guess you could, but the software is sophisticated enough to say you, this is not Harry Potter, <laughs> this is real chemistry, and you uh, need to be having a uh, conservation of mass, a uh, law of mass action, and then you also need to balance your chemical equation. It's good, excellent uh, chemistry contained in this site from what I can see. The assumptions which I raise here are in the supporting documentation within ChemReax. Um, I put them here so you don't have to do the digging which I had to do. It didn't take long, and I would hope that you have a read of it too. It does assume that all gases are ideal. That means that Kp equals Kc. If you don't understand Kp, um, you need to look that up. I'm not going to explore uh, solubility products, partial pressures, all those things within this video. But certainly, if you understand Kc, you can understand Kp and Km quite readily. It's still products over reactants, but in different sets of circumstances. So it is an approximate assumption that Kp equals Kc and Km equals Kc. So you can get the Kp and calculate the Kc or assume the Kc. And from that you can get delta G because delta G is minus RT ln Kc. It's whetting your appetite uh, for later in the video. All reactions are at constant temperature and constant pressure, which is why we can assume that Kp equals Kc. It doesn't say solid, it will say crystals, and crystals just means that they are solids, they are pure solids. Liquids and solvents are excluded because it's at constant temperature. Uh, again, there are notes on the site for you to have a look at to explain this further. Okay. Assumed background knowledge. It does come across, I'm sure, as quite a higher level energetics, higher level equilibria and uh, it does, because we've got delta G is delta H minus T delta S, and all the higher level chemists are saying, well, that means Gibbs free energy. I remember Gibbs free energy must be negative for a reaction to be spontaneous. Delta H, I can get the enthalpy of reaction in a number of ways, average bond enthalpies, enthalpies of formation, enthalpies of combustion. I remember my T must be in Kelvin. I remember my delta S is the entropy term, entropy, and entropy is a measure or extent of disorder in the system will get you uh, the correct answer in most IB questions on what is entropy. The sharp students will remember that delta S is in joules, delta H is in kilojoules, and you need to make sure that there is consistency in the units between those terms to get the correct answer for delta G. Students, again, sharp tools in the box that have looked in the data booklet, delta G is minus RT ln KC. Now there should be a little C at the bottom there. I think this is from masterorganicchemistry.com. Um, but we would put a KC there because it's the relationship between delta G and the equilibrium constant. And you can see that if delta G is made the subject of both, then delta H is minus T delta S, each equals minus RT ln KC. 
rearrange LNKC, you can see is minus delta H over RT plus delta S over R. So we can get these terms from the software and we can work out the equilibrium constant at different pressures, at different temperatures. And this can be for um, 80 pre-filled reactions, 80. No two people will have the same research question. And if you want to be flamboyant and push the boat out of it, over 1,200 different species that you can select to make your uh, research question robust and hit those high bands in terms of assessment. Okay, let's have a look. How do we do this? I think before we begin, it is worth just giving a little tour of the interface that you will see. So if you click on Science by Simulation, you can see the link is there. Just pop that Science by Simulation into Google or ChemReacts. It will be the top hit. Okay. When you do this, uh, this will happen. I have one earlier, but let's just go straight from first principles. You will land into this screen, and I can hear one of my current students saying, Mr. Midgley, that looks like 1977. And it kind of does. <laughs> I make no um, apologies for that point is it works. So what do we see? We land with general reactions. We have some acid-base titration uh, parameters that we can change in here. To be honest, I've not played with this a great deal yet. Um, but what we have done is have a look at the user guide, which I've created in the first part of today's video. You can see there's much more maths, much more uh, descriptive ideas for you to try in there. Um, we can go to the frequently asked questions. It's a very useful site. Um, why do we use it? What's unique about it? Troubleshooting, all very good. Um, what I do find very useful with students is, first of all, there are these tutorials which students can do, and teachers, I've done them, to go through, and it gives you a guided tour. And then at the end of it, it will ask you, by the power of Google Forms, to give it some numbers or give it some relationships and some trends and it will give you an immediate feedback answer on whether you've done well or not and this is further continued in the exercises here okay so i suggest have a look at the tutorials have a go at a couple of, ex couple of exercises before you begin to think about using this for your chemistry internal assessment okay so let's go back to the front page this is where we landed in the general reactions portion of chem reacts. What do we see? We see the temperature has defaulted, uh, defaulted to STP 298.15, pressure's at one bar, and then here we have the reaction rate parameters. Rate is K times the concentration times raised to a power which we call the order of reaction. Okay, in here the reactants I can click through, as I've mentioned in the preamble, the crystal is a solid, um, and there were, as I said, around 1,200 different reactants and products that you can choose from. However, we're not going to do that today. I want to just have a quick look in the reaction selector. I don't know if it's a fault of Chrome or something I'm not doing, um, but when I go into here, all it says is start, continue, cancel, and nothing here until I scroll over the actual areas. So if I hit one, then they all of a sudden magically appear. There we go. So we've got synthesis, decomposition. These are all reactions which students and teachers can select and vary the pressure and temperature of to get different values of rate constants, equilibrium constants, delta G, delta S. And it really is, uh, as far as I can see, the best free so far uh, rich area for exploration. So what we're going to do today is I wanted to have a look at, let's have a look at the uh, synthesis of hydrogen iodide, which is here. Usually I click that and it goes red. It's taken a little while this morning. I wanted to click start, um, but that's not right. You have to click continue, so we'll continue, and then it will load the settings for the synthesis of hydrogen iodide hydrogen and iodine gas, both in the gaseous state. What has changed? Well, the temperature is the same, but I can just highlight that and I can change it if I wish. The pressure is the same, down at one bar. Again, I can highlight and change it if I wish. 
I'm going to ignore the select ionization reaction stuff in the middle. That's all to do with buffers and acids and bases, which we're not doing in this uh, simulation. And here, specify reaction parameters. I have that box is auto clicked. If you're using your own reactions, you can click that box and you can select different values for the orders of reaction. So you can make the order with respect to R1, reacting to one hydrogen here, is pre-selected, which is obviously correct, which is second order. First order with respect to iodine, the computer knows this, or the simulation knows this. But you can change the orders and look at the effect. You can change the temperature and pressure and look at the effects. The effects on what? Well, here, underneath the top box, from those 80 different reactions that we can select from, we can just run the reaction. Thermodynamic properties are in this table here. Check the validity. That's if you have um, chosen your own reactants and you want to check whether will this reaction occur at this temperature. You can check the validity and it will do the calculations and work out whether it's spontaneous or not. Very powerful. You can balance the equation, click balance the equation, and you can see on the right hand side there's kind of this whirling uh, springy on the right hand side of the screen, which is doing the calculations whenever you ask for it to do an instruction. Now nothing has appeared here, sometimes it doesn't, but stoichiometric coefficients are here in the table, so we're all good. Let's start with getting thermodynamic properties. Again, here comes the whirling spring of doom, and in the thermodynamic properties table, which is underneath the reaction, you will find what magically appears. Well, let's have a look. We've got the uh, enthalpy of formation, delta HF, that's delta FH, delta HF, enthalpy of formation of hydrogen gas. And we've got the entropy of, uh, at that temperature of hydrogen, entropy of iodine. The entropy of formation of iodine gas. Now all I can think is that that's been formed from a solid and it's gone to the gaseous phase. I would assume that this temperature, it would be a solid. So I think that's the for entropy of sublimation, I would assume. Entropy of formation of hydrogen iodide is 26.36 and the entropy is 206. Don't forget that's in joules, that's in kilojoules. I keep saying that because students keep missing it. Now that's all well and good, but I can get those just from the data book. I can look at my IB data book up, and that's not really giving me a great deal of joy about what I can do. But I haven't actually yet run the reaction. So I click run the reaction, off goes the swirling spring, doing its calculations, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, ah, now we've done that, the equation has appeared, so you have to hit run the reaction to get the balanced equation for all of the pre run reactions. And not only do we now have the uh, enthalpy formation and entropy of the reactants and products here, we now have the enthalpy change of the reaction, the standard entropy, the delta G, the spontaneity is minus 16.21, so it's spontaneous, equilibrium constant, and the equilibrium constant. Wow, who needs to be looking in databases when you can do this? And then even, you know, this is textbook, isn't it? This is textbook. So here we've got hydrogen iodide, clearly at time zero, at the beginning of the reaction, there is none because it's a product. It goes up initially, the rates, we can get the rates, we can calculate the gradient here and get the rates. And it looks like 1.6, somewhere around there, but we'll look at how to get that accurately in a second. And then clearly the iodine gas, which is here, the blue one, which is a reactant, is going to decrease. I'm not sure why on this occasion I can't see hydrogen, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Why not? Because all the data I need is here in this table. So what I could do is I could highlight, copy paste, control C, control V, the data for hydrogen iodine, and then I could get the just the hydrogen iodide gas, which is in here, and copy and paste it into my Google Sheets or my Excel, and I can plot the graph there and do some initial rates on uh, formation of HI or uh, depletion of, in this case, iodine. It gives me also the half-life of hydrogen and iodine. Remember, constant half-life for first order reactions. So in this one simulation, I've got half-lives, I've got rates, 
I've got Kc, I've got delta G, I've got entropy, I've got enthalpy, and I've got the ability to change temperature, pressure, and orders of reaction. Now for me, that looks like it has the potential, again going back to the earlier comments, it's not what you do, it's the way that you do it. This has the massive potential to get some very good high scoring, high band internal assessment scores. Um, whether the school is on home-based learning or stay-at-home learning, whatever uh, it's called in your jurisdiction, or it's just as a teaching tool within the context of a standard lesson. Um, you can play with this. I would encourage you to do so. Uh, I've probably spent maybe five hours playing with this so far. Um, the next step would be what? The next step would be to start building the Google Sheets to harvest this data, start plotting some graphs. What's the relationship between order and Kc? What's the relationship between temperature and rates? We know, but for different reactions, different classes of reactions, you can get two reactions that have some similarities and compare and contrast them using this software. And the data is just beautiful. I think you'll agree. So for this video, what I'm going to do is encourage you to have a go at using it. Use some of the exercises here. Let's have a look at solubility and precipitation. It tells you what to do, how to do it, set up the reaction, and then it asks you to fill in on the Google Sheet the answers to questions so you are certain you are using the simulation properly. Um, I think this is massively powerful and a great opportunity for uh, chemists to achieve well in RK. I will do a follow-up video using one to look at the effect of, I don't know, let me know in the comments at the bottom, what do you want to see? Thank you very much for watching, have a great day, smash that subscribe button, I'm out of here, bye bye.